And at 261 pounds, his professional record is 23 wins, 10 losses and one draw with 18 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from New Orleans, Louisiana, introducing Lionel Butler, Butler. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, he weighed in at 248 pounds. His professional record is 25 wins. One loss with 21 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen from East London, England, presenting the former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Lewis. Well, there you have it then, Lennox Lewis, as I say, on the comeback trail, and this is a very, very important match. The winner of this will be considered, alongside with Mike Tyson, of course, the number one contender for the WBC Championship. The holder currently is Oliver McCall. Responsibilities, and I told you what mine is. Let's all do our job properly, okay? Good luck to both of you. Shake your Oliver McCall, of course, the man who took the championship from Lewis for that second round surprise stoppage. Last September, this is Lennox's first outing since then. And of course, McCall will defend against Frank Bruno. Before either Tyson or Lewis or Butler can get a crack at him. And there's a very good chance that McCall won't be championed by then anyway. So, Lana Butler, whose best chance might be early on. Not in the best of shapes, I'm afraid. Lousy start to his professional career poor record in fact i dispute the record that came up on the screen i've got him 22 wins 10 losses one draw with 17 men beat inside the distance but uh, plenty of good names on the record made his debut against the uh, former lewis victim phil jackson fought riddick both and was stopped in only his second fight and uh, butler outscored over 10 rounds by Oliver McCall, the reigning champion, back in 1990. But since 1991, and his loss to Kevin Ford, he's unbeaten in 15 fights. And that's uh, nice work by Lewis there. Left hand, right uppercut. And of course, Lewis managed by Frank Maloney, who really pulled off a coup by signing Lewis when they all wanted him. former European, British and Commonwealth champion Alex Lewis as well of course as WBC champion and was awarded the championship you may remember controversial circumstances having beaten Razor Ruddock in a couple of rounds he was recognised retrospectively by the WBC and made his first defence against Tony Tucker which he won on points then came from behind to beat Frank Bruno in seven for that win over Jackson and then the subsequent loss to Oliver McCall <laughs> and of course Sir Lewis became the first heavyweight champion from Britain if you uh, forget the Canadian connection. Since Bob Fitzsimmons stopped James J. Corbett in the 14th round in 1897, the 17th of March. So half a minute to go then in round one. And uh, obviously, Lennox Lowe is very wary of the power that Butler possesses. He flattened James Bonecrusher Smith in three you may remember and uh, I suppose the biggest win really for him was when he beat uh, Tony Tubbs the former WBA champion in the first round as Lewis there get through the nice left right well good first round there not a great deal between them but uh, Lennox Lewis looks like he's better boxing has uh, taken it for him
appeared up and when you start seeing the opportunities well that was that big sweeping right and Lewis really made that one look better than it was he just stumbled with the right foot you can't catch it out of here so it's around two then Lewis, 93 amateur contests. He won 58 of them by knockout. Very impressive. Big, tall man. Unfortunately, I've always found him a bit dull in front of the TV camera when it comes to speaking. I'm preferring to let his fist do the talking, which he's doing here. Butler strong enough to give most heavyweights a hard time, at least for a few rounds. but not in the best of shape. From journeyman loser to potential contender, Lionel Butler, what a story. And of course, the WBC have already said that they will recognise Mike Tyson as the number one contender regardless of what else happens and well Lionel Butler now getting booed by this crowd and trying the old rope a tactics there but Lewis taking advantage of his laps They're warning Lewis not to do that. Nice left hand work there from the next Lewis. And the trainer Emmanuel Stewart. Really just fine tuning what was already a good fighting machine in the shape of Lewis. Really, the night McCall won the championship. He got lucky, and I will say that until the day I die. He shut his eyes through a massive right hand. He whacked Lennox on the chin. It was a great punch. No doubt. And then there's no nothing chinny about Lennox. It was at all. It was a very good punch. But I did feel the referee was right to stop it. Another good round this for Lewis. In fact, a much much better one. Looks like he's tamed his bear of a fighter already. One of the judges for this contest, Larry O'Connell, from England. Round three then of this scheduled 12 rounder. Still, Lionel Butler's only opportunity, really, is to crack in an almighty punch. He's got a tough head, though, Butler, but Lewis there cracked him with the right hand. Oh, this is much better work by Lewis. I've criticised him in the past as being a bit slow, a bit ponderous, but uh, using the combinations nicely here. At one time, a Lennox Lewis combination was a jab, and then 15 seconds later, you might be lucky to get another one. But now he's using both hands. What a difference it's made. Still more improvement to come, though, I think. And the one match, of course, we all want to see is Lewis square up against Riddick Bowe. The man, of course, Lewis beat as an amateur. <laughs> One of uh, the assistant trainers of Lennox Lewis, Harold the Shadow Knight, former contender. But a 
still hoping Lewis comes in and sticks out his chin. But you really should only make that mistake once in your life. And Lewis there being told off by Denker for standing on the foot of Butler. That does happen though when he switched to South Four. Feet tend to collide. now looking very confident and Denkin really is completely out of order here because that's a very legitimate thing to do to turn an opponent well what a shame they've got an old man who's uh, forgotten some of the finer points of this particular sport to referee There's no law against turning an opponent so many of the finer points of this sport forgotten by so many fighters so good round then for Lewis again and that was a a right old stumble by Butler wasn't it good punch 
So we've had four rounds, Lewis has won them all. And Marty Denkin has jumped on Lewis for every conceivable offence so far. And unjustifiably as well. And down goes Butler now. Right hand, followed by a stiff left from Lewis. And the momentum put Butler over. Can he finish him? Round five. Scheduled for 12, of course. And Butler was stopped in three of his first half dozen fights, but he hasn't been stopped since. And again, a hard right by Lewis. Oops, and that's a miss and a stumble yes of course uh, thank you there Butler's friend having a word with Lewis for that I'm just wondering if thank will deem to disqualify Lennox Lewis for uh, for something or other Nice boxing from Lewis, not doing anything rash, just dismantling really Butler. Well, Butler now looking reticent. He's getting hurt. He can't outbox Lewis. He can barely connect with the big punch he needs. And this is perfect for Lewis now. He's completely demoralised him. And of course, Lewis is fighting too here. He's fighting not only Butler, but also the very officious Marty Denkin. crowd are not appreciating the final points here once again Butler gets hit with the right and thought about going down from it well oh la la well that's a swallow sorry that is a capitulation by Lionel Butler but uh, one of the reasons of course for it is he's been completely outclassed and outpunched by Lennox Lewis so congratulations then to Lewis Camp and I hope Frank Maloney Lewis's manager complains to the WBC for Dinkins' handling of that contest. That was poor. Winner of this WBC heavyweight title eliminator bout. At 2 minutes and 55 seconds of the fifth round, Lennox Lewis. So Lewis then does it. He completely demoralized Lionel Butler. Forced him to quit, really. Butler was begging for half a punch so he could go down and out. Which brings us to the end Many of our program this evening. A tremendous performance, and the nightmare of Oliver McCall must have disappeared. Definitely, uh, you know, this is just, this is a fight preparing for Oliver McCall, and the same way I boxed there, I'm going to box the same way when I box Oliver McCall again because I want my title back. He came out in the first round a bit like Oliver McCall. Yeah, he did. You know, I learned from my mistakes, and I was definitely prepared for him to come out like that because he's got a very tenacious style. So I, I made sure that I was on my P's and Q's. At the end of the fourth round, the advice in the corner was you're letting the fight go at his pace, step it up to your own pace, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, basically, I realized that he was getting tired because he weighs 260 pounds, and I realized that 260 pounds can't touch this. So as long as I stepped it up a bit, then he was out of his realm. How much of a difference, to be honest, did having Emmanuel Stewart in your corner really make? A big difference because he's a good tactician. We go in there with some uh, strategy, and we basically pull out great performances like that. This man, Butler, was reckoned, apart from Mike Tyson, to be perhaps the most dangerous man in world boxing. You've now beaten him in pretty spectacular fashion. You must be due a rematch with Oliver McCall. 
Oh, I'm definitely preparing for that. And if Oliver's listening, you are the one I'm waiting for. And and also I like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Well done, a great performance, splendidly done. Thank you. Respect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.